Gordon Johnson, The Essence of Generosity. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, I'm going to share a definition of generosity, a position that Bermuda's third sector has hijacked that word, and suggest different ways we can shift our conversations to honor generosity. But first, I'd like to thank Ian McDonald Smith for the use of his beautiful images tonight. Generosity has the element of kindness and connection on both sides of the relationship, the giving and receiving of gifts. I invite you to reflect on your own life experiences with generosity, gifts you have received or gifts you have given, and describe to a friend at break what highlights stand out for you. As writer Peter Block identifies, Generosity is the alternative to the world of barter. It comes from the Latin generosis, which means of noble birth, and conveys a sense of bountiful and abundant. Generosity is to make an offer for its own sake. Generosity is not barter. In Bermuda's third sector, generosity is called charity, which is a false generosity because it is orientated around the needs and deficiencies of just one party in that transaction. Charity is demeaning in this way, as if you need me, and you have nothing but gratitude to offer in return. We use the word charity often without thinking of our patriarchal and colonial roots enmeshed with hierarchy and privilege. We even structure our charitable organizations on a private, for-profit business model, with power often centralized and held by a select few. This creates a false platform for generosity. What if we organize our third sector structures around our individual gifts, skills, and talents, rather than our title, social status, or financial power? What if we created more shared economies and participatory structures, learning from Bermuda Lodges and, of course, our friendly societies? Generosity emerges from the ground of abundance, yet, much of our third sector leadership is generated within a context of scarcity. Our economic structures treat generosity as simply naive, and our consumer world counterfeits generosity by offering something as a bargain. So how can we shift this? Our pervasive belief in scarcity and barter makes generosity, our gifts of time, treasure, or talent, appear as an artificial act. We sometimes call it currying favor. You go to an elder in a culture of generosity and it's considered respectful. You go to a third sector leader and a first thought is, we must want something. For too many, our media context is one that markets fears, assigns fault, and rewards self-interest. Our local party politics is often defined by these practices. The context that invites generosity is a vision of possibility and a culture of sharing, sharing both our individual and collective gifts. It is very disturbing when donated funds are misused and trust is betrayed. We wince when we hear heartbreaking stories of undeclared conflicts of interest, self-dealing, and self-rewarding. Transparency significantly reduces the chances of betrayal. So how can we create a third sector culture of transparency? We need to help each other shift away from a default stance of advice without commitment. What if we replaced advice with curiosity? How would you feel being invited into a conversation that was curious about a matter that resonates with you? A curious conversation about Bermudian status or same-sex marriage. Questions are more transforming than answers, so as leaders, and we can all be leaders, we want to focus on inviting generosity through questions that be held to three tasks. Shift the way people gather, try a circle. Name the conversation through powerful questions. Listen, and please, stay away from the mic. In his books on community, Block argues there are five possible conversation themes for surfacing generosity in our third sector. Possibility, ownership, dissent, commitment, and gifts. Let me address all five and invite you to host one of those conversations within your network. Possibility is a future beyond green and distinct from problem solving. This works on us and evolves from a discussion of personal crossroads. We can ask ourselves, 
What declaration of possibility can you make that has the power to transform our community and inspire you? The ownership conversation asks us to act as if we are creating what exists in the world. The distinction is between ownership and blame. We ask ourselves these questions. How valuable an experience do you plan this to be? How much risk are you willing to take? And to what extent are you invested in the well-being of the whole? The dissent conversation creates an opening for commitment. When dissent is expressed, just listen. Don't solve it, defend against it, or explain anything. We can ask ourselves, what doubts and reservations do you have? What have you said yes to that you no longer really mean? And what resentments do you hold in silence? The commitment conversation is a promise with no expectation of return. The enemy of commitment is lip service. Refusal to promise does not cost us our seat at the table. We only lose our seat when we do not honor our word. So we ask ourselves the questions like, what promises am I willing to make today? Our task is to bring the gifts of those on the margin into the center. We choose our destiny when we have the courage to acknowledge our own gifts and choose to bring them into the world. Remember, a gift is not a gift until it is offered. So we can ask ourselves, what are the gifts you possess and are willing to share? Questions name the agenda that create space for an alternative future. The power is in the asking, not in the answers. So when we look at around at our community gatherings, what space or spaces are we creating for an alternative future to emerge in Bermuda? And finally, detachment is the highest form of generosity, giving without expectation. Bermuda's third sector is moving in the opposite direction, more structure, more hierarchy, and more reporting. I recommend we move to a transparent system where less formality is required as the answer to any question will always be available to us. Thank you. The background to this, is Gordon spoke to me a while back now, several months ago. I'm ready, I have a talk on generosity, you said. What brought you to this moment? Was there one defining instance or? Well, thank you for that question. I don't think it, I think it was a series of defining uh, moments that really allowed me to frame what I felt was transactional into what I feel can be transformational. Yeah. And I think that's the difference. Yeah, yeah. How do you take this message and transform that to your members so they can be on board as well. Well, thank you for that question, and it's, it's really exciting to hear from a board member of a charity. I think it begins in conversation and really talking about uh, what, what is a charity and, and really discussing amongst yourselves so that you can land on a place where you can start to look at aspects of charity, aspects of generosity, aspects of servant leadership, serving the community, um, that I think could be quite exciting. And some of the, there's a lot of work that's, that's really written about this. One of uh, my go-to people would be Peter Block uh, on community, the abundant community, uh, is one of his books, and I'm happy to share some of the references that have inspired me. Okay. Sorry.